Last project management talk for the day. Really keen to get you out of here on time for drinks. So please welcome Scott from Technocrat. Take it away, Scott. Hello, everyone. My name is Scott, and I'm from Technocrat. <laughs> and we're going to spend the next 30 minutes or so talking about how to do a site audit in 45 minutes. So as humans, we are I find we are very good at assessing situations. It's an in instinct that I think people have. So let me give you an example. Imagine you're walking through the city at, at night and you come across a particular laneway and it's dark and there's a stream of blood flowing down the gutter and in the distance you hear screams. Then as a human, you would probably instinctively assess danger. And if you did that, then hopefully you would think, I shouldn't go down that laneway because it might not be safe. And that's something that we do without even thinking. We make assessments of things in rapidly in certain situations. Another example is that as humans, we assess each other. So for those of you who don't know me, you're probably assessing me right now without even realizing it subconsciously. And you're making, as the presentation goes on, you'll make assessments like, I wonder if he really knows what he's talking about. <laughs> and is he a good communicator or is he boring? And that's okay, you can make those assessments because we all do those things all the time. But what we want to talk about today is how to make that kind of a quick assessment on a Drupal project. So let's continue. So the main thing that I want to communicate in this presentation in this short period of time is, is it possible to complete a useful site audit of a Drupal code base in 45 minutes? The answer is yes. So why is a site audit useful? Well, the situation I'm talking about is when you are presented with a Drupal website, a project that you have inherited or that has come uh, into your agency or into your care as a freelancer, and it's not one that you built. So somebody else built this site, built this project, and it's been handed over to you. And so what you need to do is try to assess, and hopefully in as short a period of time as possible, where on the spectrum this project lies. Is it a dumpster fire? or is it a beautiful work of art? Most likely, in, in most cases, your, the project will fall somewhere in the middle of those two. And the reason we want to figure this out is because often what happens is a client will come to you and they'll hand over their, their uh, shiny Drupal site and they already have a list of bugs that they want fixed urgently, need to be in production tomorrow, ideally, and they already have a feature backlog that they want you to start working on ASAP. Uh, but what I found is that um, a lot of clients have very um, high expectations for how quickly you take ownership of that code base and how quickly they can then blame you for the bugs that were there before you got there. So that's why a, a site audit is, is, is important. We want to review the current state of the Drupal site so we can identify potential problem areas and we can determine a path forward towards maintenance and feature development in a short period of time. So obviously in 45 minutes you can't do everything. So just quickly, what would be in scope and out of scope for this, for this audit? Uh, obviously we're not gonna do any kind of load testing. We wouldn't have time to thoroughly review custom code, particularly if there is a, lot, a, a large amount of custom code. Uh, and we wouldn't have time to thoroughly review external integrations or API integrations uh, and, and understand how they work. Um, and we don't have time for any kind of extensive security testing or penetration testing or anything like that. Uh, what is in scope, however, is a, an opportunity to get a feel for the code quality, and, and particularly the, the custom code that might exist in the project, uh, an opportunity to look at the security settings uh, that affect Drupal's uh, code base, an opportunity to look at performance configuration, uh, to look at the documentation that's available in the site, and also to look at the config and settings. Um, one of the quickest ways to get a, a feel for what, how big a Drupal site is, what it does, how it's been used, is to look at settings files and look at exported configuration and see what's there and what isn't there. So how is it possible to conduct a site audit in 45 minutes? Well, the way we do it is we start with a plan. So here is an example plan. You can come up with your own, but you can borrow this one if you like. And we just allow a period of time for a few different tasks and then you, we keep moving. Uh, the reason you need a plan is because it's very easy to fall down rabbit holes. Um, if you discover something that's really quite odd in this project you've inherited, uh, normally our own uh, curiosity would 
tend to make us want to drill down into that and find out what the heck is going on. But we have to resist that temptation if we want to get through uh, a, a broad site order in a short period of time. So we start with the plan, and we use a template. Uh, there's a template there if you can be bothered and you want to note that down that you could download uh, as an example. And I won't flick across to it now because then I'll never get back to my PowerPoint, but I will flick across to it later. Um, the benefit of starting with a template is that you don't have to mess around with all that uh, initial setting up the document, structuring it. So in this template, there are subheadings for security, for code base, for performance. Um, and, and then what you can do is as you be going through your audit, as soon as you find something, you can basically copy and paste. Put a heading in, put a section in, go back to your audit, keep looking at the site, find something else, copy and paste into your template, um, and it, and it speeds, speeds things up. Uh, one thing I normally include, and which, which I can show you later, is whenever I do a site audit, I try to put an icon or a flag in to indicate how important a particular item might be. Is this thing that we've identified critical? Is it a security issue that could result in the site being hacked very soon? Is it a, perf a critical performance issue? Or is it just like a nice to have and something that we should be aware of, but is not critical for the site's day-to-day -day operation? So first item on, in our plan is we will run the Drupal site audit module. Uh, what this module does is you can use Drush to generate a report that gives you a snapshot of the code base's size or the Drupal website size and its configuration. It flags potential issues. Uh, I would suggest if you're using a current version of, of Drupal 8, which you should be, then you should use the dev version of this module um, for running this report so you don't run into issues. And that's an example Drush command that you can use to generate the report. It basically just says run all the available reports, output the report in HTML, include everything, even things that aren't broken, format it uh, using the bootstrap uh, CSS framework, and redirect the output to a HTML file. Um, so once you've done that, what you get actually get if you open up that HTML file is a, quite a long uh, report, and it's color-coded in different you know, green, blue, red. What you want to do is look for the red sections. Anything that's in red has been flagged as a potential issue. Um, but a few other things to keep a lookout for that are always important are how is the caching configuration, uh, how is the caching configured? You know, is it switched on? Does, is Drupal's page cache set to have a uh, reasonable expiry time? Is views configuration switched on? Are your CSS and JS, JS files aggregated? Um, and yeah, so all those things. Another thing to look out for and which this module provides you is a, to give an indication of the size of the, of the website. So it tells you the size of the project root and what, whatever might be in the public file system, uh, but also the size of the database. Uh, there's a few reasons why that could be useful. Some websites you inherit could be enormous. So if you have a 20 gigabyte database, then one of the th first things you might want to think about if you're asking some of your developers to onboard to that project is, is there a way for us to sanitize this database or remove some of, the, uh, some of the bulk of it so that you can set up your local development environments more quickly without having to sync 20 gigabyte databases? Uh, another thing you may want to consider is if, if uh, backups are your responsibility it's, um, rather than the hosting providers, then you do want to have an idea about the size of the project whether it's database or file system, if it's very large, then the time it takes to back things up and to transfer backup files is always worth considering. Uh, and one more thing, logging. in the, uh, the very bottom thing in the site audit report is um, how, what, any, any logging that's configured in, in the Drupal website. Uh, if there is no logging, obviously that's an issue. Um, and, but what you want to know is uh, what logging is enabled and where are those logs found. And because as soon as the client wants you to start fixing bugs, uh, you'll need to, you probably need to find those logs quickly. So moving along, the next part of our plan is the hacked module. Uh, once again, easy to install. If you use the dev version, then you can also use that patch file, which provides Drush 9 command support. And the benefit of that is you don't have to use the Drupal UI to look at the report. You can run that Drush HLP command. And what it would do is give you a list of all the modules that are uh, contrary modules and core that are enabled in, in the website, and then give you a count of the number of changes 
um, in, in those modules. So basically what you want to see is that any modules that are flagged as changed uh, also have corresponding patches in your composer file. Um, if there weren't, uh, then that would obviously be something you would want to look into. And one example of that, which we found recently uh, while conducting a site audit, was a particular contrib module that had been moved outside its normal location. Uh, and so was committed to the repo and had you know, been modified. Um, uh, but those modifications weren't uh, tracked or could documented in any way. Um, and, and also, ha the problem with that is that later on, if that particular module has security updates that get released, you can't easily apply them uh, because basically that module is existing outside your normal compl composer workflow. Um, so yeah, basically what to look for, just making sure that everything that's flagged has changed uh, makes sense, that uh, it matches up with what's in your composer file. So moving along, the next step in that plan is the security review module. Uh, this one also generates a report, um, but it's available through your Drupal UI. And basically what it gives you is a list of green or red items. And what I'd recommend is, uh, copy all the green ones across your report as well because you can flag those as, okay, these are the things we, that have been checked and they're okay. Um, and then take a look at what the red ones say and determine whether they need further investigation, whether they should be flagged as problems in your report. Um, one of the things to be aware of is that if you're running this report locally, which you probably are at least initially rather than in the production site, uh, just keep an eye out for things that get flagged as issues which may be issues locally but may not be in production because maybe in production the configuration is slightly different and you're not showing errors on screen whereas locally that's not set so you are um, just so you don't flag anything incorrectly okay next thing in the in our plan is code base review and so what we want to do is take a quick look at the the code base as a whole and get a feel for whether things make sense from a Drupal perspective so I think if, for anyone who's been working with Drupal for a while, you've got a, already an idea in your head about what the directory structure should look like. So you're looking at things like um, are the contrib modules in a separate directory to the custom ones. The same with themes. Is there a contrib themes directory and a cu custom themes directory? Um, you might look for things like are there uh, front-end assets outside the, are they like inside the custom theme directory or are they outside the web root, which I've seen quite frequently. Um, you might also want to take a look at where, uh, where is the config sync or where is the configuration directory where YAML files are exported to. Is there one? And is, that, is it committed to the, the repo? Uh, you can quickly have a look at how many cost, custom modules are, uh, there are. Are there four or are there 100? Uh, and, but the other thing that's also worth doing is digging into your custom modules, opening, them, opening up the code and having a bit of a look through. And, um, once you've, you've done this a few times, you can really get a quick feel for something that looks scary versus something that looks like it's been well look up, looked after. So a couple of things to, to keep your eye out, eyes out for. Um, one is commenting. Are there proper comment blocks? Um, is, it clear, is it clearly formatted? Um, one, of, one of the red flags that I often find in code bases that you know, haven't been well maintained are debugging lines of code that have been left in there. So maybe there's, you know, print print lines, it's, you know, um, say, uh, you know, error and printing to the screen and then a die command or something, something else like that. But basically you're looking for things that have been, that people have been using to try to write their code but then left in the, in the repo. Um, another thing to look out for is like large sections of commented out code. Uh, so maybe, in, you know, in, in the things have been refactored and instead of actually removing it and and using Git to manage the changes that things have just been commented out and left, left in the code base. Um, another thing to look out for is direct SQL qu queries. Uh, I've found a lot of times in, cu in custom modules, if, if there's a lot of direct SQL qu queries in the module, it can often be an uh, indication that things are not being done in a Drupal kind of manner. Maybe it's, um, you know, data is either being read or stored uh, in a way that's, that's not uh, best practice for Drupal. And next step in the plan is configuration review. So what, um, as mentioned before, the sync directories, making sure they're in the repository. One thing you can often see quickly is, is there just one sync directory or is the config, 
config split module used, and so maybe there's a separate directory for a production or a testing environment. Uh, another thing that's worth looking at is settings files and services.yaml files. So the, there's often a lot of things to look for in here that you can find in a, in a really brief amount of time. So for example, um, it, are there any if or switch statements that uh, per environment in the settings files? What is the method used to determine which environment you're in, whether you're in production or testing or local? Um, is it trying to import a local settings file? And if so, is there a, a default one in the repository? Uh, other things to look for are uh, other services that might be configured. So often you'll see if there's um, memcache or Redis in use, you might see configuration for that in settings files. You might also see configuration for external APIs um, to give you an indication of any, any integrations that may exist. Uh, and you may also see configuration for logging. So um, for example, if you use monolog, the configuration for that is normally in your services.yaml file. Uh, one thing to look out for is any situation where, um, where there's potential for the production environment to be uh, flagged incorrectly. So what you don't want is someone developing lo locally and, and somehow hitting a production API for some external system. Um, and hopefully there's additional safety measures in place to prevent that, like I IP whitelisting or, or whatever else there, there might be. But um, it's always worth checking because you can get yourself into some dangerous situations if suddenly uh, you're, you, you, know, you take over a code base, you're not familiar with it, you set up locally, and then you find that your local um, setup is, writing, is able to write data to an external API that's, that's meant to be used for production only. Um, one other thing to check is your, the cron settings. Uh, I would say that in um, quite a significant percentage of Drupal sites that, that we've taken over at some point, um, one, of the, one of the most common sources of bugs has been cron settings. So either cron not running correctly or not running frequently enough or all kinds of things. But um, basically tracking that down as, as the source of, of a bug or a performance issue um, is, is quite often something that we need to do. One example of that is a site that we maintained which had um, cron being triggered in the default manner, so basically via page request. And this particular site had a very um, heavy cron load at particular times of day. We were processing a lot of data that had come in from an external system. And so when some poor sucker hit the site at a particular time, um, it triggered the cron process and basically overloaded that particular server and they got some pretty terrible response times. So what I would suggest in, instead is always, where you can, always trigger cron via uh, your Linux cron tab service, and if, and if you can, use drush cron um, to trigger it so that it doesn't have to go through your web server. Um, last step in the plan is the documentation review. So have, yeah, um, being aware of any documentation that may have been provided to you outside the repo itself, um, but also in, in the repo, is there a readme file on the root and is it up to date? Is there a readme file in your custom theme? Um, are there any readme files in your custom modules? And also just in the custom code itself, is it well documented? Can you easily go in there and, and ha get a feel for what specific functions do or for what a particular module is meant to do? So hopefully, if you follow that plan and cover those topics and keep moving, then what you can do is every time you find something, um, and it's something that could be an issue, jump across to your template, put it in, flag it, whether it's high, medium, or low priority. And then at the end of, of, of that um, process, then hopefully what you've got is uh, like a fairly rough site audit that you can then review, polish up, uh, fix the spelling mistakes, and get into a sort of uh, a, a useful state. So that's your 45 minutes up. What would you do if you had the luxury of an additional 15 minutes or an additional hour or two? Um, next steps to things to check would be your front end build process. Um, if it's documented, then you can jump straight in and see whether, it, whether it works. Is there a gold file and does that run? Um, is there anything that's not documented about that build process? And then from there, reviewing other things uh, like hosting environments, SSH access, and deployment procedures. So what I'm going to do now is quickly jump out of this view.
Maybe. Oh, maybe not. No, okay, not sure. Um, does anyone have any questions? The which, sorry? Yeah, sure. Uh, Alex? Thanks, Scott. It was very interesting. Um, the question is about automating all these processes. Do you, is there a, a service or, yeah, automating it all? Um, is there a I mean, service or have you thought about it creating mm. one? Um, I mean, in some ways, it, it's, there's, people have gone part of the way to automating already. So using those modules gives, gives you quick snapshots and flags particular issues. So I guess probably the best way to automate would be extending on those. And maybe the closest one already that I've used is that site audit one. So if you were to take that and add a few more things to it and improve the, uh, the quality of the output, then you'd be 90% of the way to automating. And have you heard of uh, Drutiny? I have, and I haven't used it extensively, so I can't say whether I'd prefer it over um, site audit. Um, but what I do know about site audit is uh, I've been able to get it running in like five minutes um, and producing a report, and um, so I found it to be quite efficient for what for the, as a tool. Sorry, last question: Can you use site audit or other tools without bootstrapping Drupal, like without uploading using database at all? Uh, Just, I don't yeah. think. Well, so site audit, no, and hacked. Not sure, actually. Never tried. All good. Another question? We still have time for your demo. Can you get it back up? Well, I'd have to figure out how to get my screen back. <laughs> no, no, not that. I want to go to the terminal. Kill it. Oh. Oh, yeah, maybe. Hold on. What if I close Chrome? Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, that is the output of Drush HLP, which is the hacked module. And if we can scroll, here we go. That's, that's the final report. Um, this one I definitely think had some issue with the Drupal core check, because I there was no reason for that 454 changes. But the other ones were, um, the, the, those other modules were an accurate reflection of the patches that were in the composer file. Um, but the rest of were unchanged. And one other thing, hopefully we can show. No, oh, maybe not, let's see. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that is the site audit output. Uh, so breast practices are green, but then scrolling down for this particular site had some caching configuration issues that you can see there. Code base size was 200 megabytes. Uh, it gives you some pretty useful information about content types and fields. Uh, knowing how many there are and like how many nodes there are, how many content types there are, and field usage. Uh, what else? <laughs> database as well. Um, database size was not particularly big. This one. one, this has one table which has a different engine to the rest of the database. It's odd. Uh, and lots of other things. And logging at the bottom. Views caching. So definitely worth checking out. And oh, the final thing is the template. Let's see.
Hmm. Oh, yeah, no internet. Okay, never mind. <laughs> all right, you have to look that up yourself. Um, that's all. Thank you. Thank you.